at this uh, galvanic corrosion, we talk about a few graphs, a few graph, and we we covered one of the we covered one of the working condition, right? Uh, between the zinc and platinum, right? So previous class we covered this one. Huh? So uh, again, before you study the diagram, you have to understand how galvanic corrosion happened. Eh? So when two metal meet together, they will fight for nobility. They'll fight for nobility. One have higher nobility will go up, right? Uh, less nobility will go down, right? And then how you know which one go up, which one go down is based on their potential, right? The voltage difference, huh? the voltage difference, or we call it half cell. Meaning, if that element it contribute electron, how many voltage uh, it can it can generate? So, for for each element, so there's a table for that, right? Standard potential value, uh, E superscript zero, huh? So this that is potential. Then those have more positive voltage one will go up. Uh, there's low voltage one will go down. So you have high nobility metals and lower nobility metals. So lower nobility will corrode. How corrode happen? The lower nobility metals will contribute electron to the higher nobility and the electron will go to the borders of the higher nobility metals and attract all the positive charge in the solution to the borders to combine and reaction happen there, okay? So that is, uh, okay, then the higher nobility and lower nobility, which one cathode, which one anode? So lower nobility, that one that contribute electron, this one is anode. So anodic process happen here, and this one will control the corrosion rate. Nah? The one that at the lower, this one, uh, will control the corrosion rate. But the higher one, you become cathode, all right, so cathode just lie there and receive electron only. All right, nothing will happen, and uh, you can say something happened to the borders at borders, but the medium or element itself doesn't do anything. Okay, nothing happened to the element itself. Okay, so this is how galvanic uh, corrosion happened, and uh, of course these two metals uh, in the test or final exam you are given is inside a solution. So again, inside solution when it become acidic solution, when you see the acidic solution, uh, even uh, the pH can be, uh, uh, pH zero means very, very acidic, right? So when in a uh, acidic, uh, pH will, pH value will be less than seven. So when you're in the acidic uh, solution, again, think, what is the definition of pH? Okay, uh, this one, I'll give you his, uh, this one come out in the final exam. Uh pH value, uh, you'll be asked what is the uh, what is your understanding in pH value? Huh? So when you have more concentration of H positive, you have more concentration of H positive, what, what happened to your pH value? It will reduce from seven to lower value. Huh? So it means you have less than seven, pH less than seven means you have more H positive. When you have more than seven, pH more than seven, it, what does it mean? It means that you have OH negative concentration. Okay. H positive and OH negative, they are there when you have solution. Right? We have water, then you have these two, these two elements there, positive and negative charge. And when you see the keyword acidic solution, acidic solution means more H positive. So the, all the H positive will attract to the cathode, uh, to the higher nobility metals to become hydrogen H positive combined with the negative, it become hydrogen gas. That's why in the in the surrounding of the cathode, you will see hydrogen gas come out from the surface, generated from the surface. Actually not from the element, but it because of the combination of H positive and the electron charge negative charge, then it become hydrogen gas, right? So this is uh, 
Again, now this is important. Uh, I give you hints already. Uh. Okay, pH value will be asked. So me meaning that you have to know uh, what happened if you have acidic. All right. So what happened if you have alkalic? What happened? Uh? Or what is the meaning of acidic solution or the solution become acidic? What happened to the H? I'm looking for concentration of H positive or concentration of OH negative. Uh, if you write that one, you score marks. If in your explanation, you didn't mention about uh, H positive, you didn't mention about ne OH negative, then uh, you, I cannot give you mark because you don't hit the keyword for acidic or alkalic solution. Eh? Okay. Any question about uh, the principle or the galvanic uh, corrosion? Or acidic solution or alkalic solution? You need me to explain one more time. Everyone clear, right? Oh, yes, I understand. Okay, good. Now, um, okay, so, um, okay, let's look at this, uh, this graph. Huh? So this graph, uh, is you you'll be given zinc and uh, platinum, right? Zinc and platinum. So in the exam, you're given two metals also. So two metals, you look at the table. One table will be given, which is the E, E superscript zero, the potential table will be given. So from the table, you decide which one become cathode, which one become anode. Eh? So uh, two metals, lower nobility one, you draw the positive gradient line I mean you, you'll be told like the question will say okay generate or construct a even diagram what is even diagram which is the potential e versus log i the axis is log i eh? i is current eh? current or corrosion rate it depends on cathode or anode uh, eh? so potential versus log i okay log i I can be two things. Uh. It can be corrosion rate or it can be density, uh, current density. Uh. So E versus log I, uh, this one you draw the two axes and then you're given the two metals. Those lower level, uh, lower nobility, not lower level, lower nobility, you draw the positive gradient line and higher nobility, you draw the negative gradient line. They will intersect at one point okay then you draw um, and then um, the lower nobility you assume there's two process happen lower nobility metals you assume two process happen which is it contribute electron and also it receive electron which means you need to draw another line for lower nobility metals which is this line but it this line must be before this uh, higher nobility line. Huh? So uh, when you're given two metals and you're asked to construct or develop a uh, even diagram, what you do, first draw axis. And then in your mind, you should you should see three lines in on a graph. How you construct three lines, you start with the lower nobility metals, draw positive gradient line for low nobility metals. And then draw another line for the lower nobility because you have two process. Intersection, you need this point. Eh? And then the higher nobility, you draw another line for higher nobility, this line. Okay, then the question will ask you to label all these points. Okay, you label this point. For example, point one, uh, this one, free corrosion potential of more noble metals, which is one. You label uh, A, B, or C here. So normally, I would in exam, I would change all this label here, but the concept system. So point one here is before corrosion for higher nobility metals, one. Then two is the less nobility one, means no corrosion happened yet uh, because it's too rich balance. Uh, the... Uh, this, this is the receiving electron, right? Receiving electron line, and this one is contribution of electron line. Both meet at one point, so point number two here will become the point of the less nobility. Uh, we call it free corrosion. Free corrosion potential point 
at this point, the last nobility doesn't experience any corrosion. Eh? So this point also, higher, uh, nothing happened to high nobility. Then after that, okay, after that, um, the point number three here, point number three here will be um, the corrosion potential and corrosion, poten uh, corrosion potential for, uh, I mean corrosion happen at, uh, at one point, for example, point number four, right? So you just pick a line between this, this intersection and this intersection, you draw one line, you draw one line here, and one line, this one is the corrosion uh, rate, uh, corrosion rate. So corrosion rate, you project up, less noble will corrode, right? Uh, less noble will corrode. So the same go up here. So this one will become potential of uh, catholic process. This point you project to the left, you get potential for anodic process. Okay. So I hope you can know how to label all these points. Huh? Any question on labeling point one, two, three, four? Ask me now. Huh? Again, this one is important for your final exam. Any question? Sivendra, okay? Yeah, so far, okay, sir. All right, good. Important, uh, again, uh, I stress again, uh, important. Uh, I give you hints already, uh, important. Uh. All right, so, so we have all the calculation here. Um, you can read. Uh, so uh, previous lecture, we did cover this one already. Um, okay, the difference of voltage is difference between these two value, right? These two value, delta V, okay, is your... Um, uh, voltage difference, okay, um, and there's a calculation for that. Huh? So I see again uh, current here uh, before our this uh, this uh, class. Huh? We already explained what is the IC, huh? is the uh, density current, huh? density current, um, and then uh, this one is the constant uh, rho. S C means surface of cathode. K another constant, so you'll be uh, given if this come out. So uh, surface of area will be a uh, surface of area of cathode and square. Huh? Okay. Then we uh, previously we also seen um, this one is more realistic data, and this one is what we covered hypothetically theoretical graph. Huh? Okay, so this one is the real one, or what you can see in experiment. This one is theoretical, right? Theoretical. What is the main difference between this graph and this graph? Is that we assume we will use this, this point number two to find point three and point four. This is theoretical. However, in real case, what happened to your E cathode and E anode? You find from the I can call it parallel line from the less noble metals. Point number four, you project up, you get point three, then you project down, you share the same value from point four. But this graph, you share the same value from point two. Okay, this is on theory, yeah. This one is a real one. Okay. <coughs> you'll be asked, you'll be asked. In final exam, the real one. Huh? <coughs> okay, then this is another uh, real scenario that happened between titanium and platinum. So in the table that I give you, the potential table that I give you, you can see which one is less noble, which one is a uh, high no nobility. And you also have the point one, two, three, four. Okay, so already. We have all this on the screen here, right? So basically what is important here is the axis of E and log I, and then the points of each of the element here. Huh? So they, I make a comparison here. So this one is the real one. This one is the previous theoretical one. So you can see the real one is much more simpler than the theoretical one. Huh? 
So this one you can uh, you can read from my slides here. Another one is that this one is uh, ferrum and zinc. So ferrum and zinc, you know that uh, zinc is less noble, right? Zinc is less noble, ferrum is higher noble. So when the ferrum and zinc happen together, so you will see that this one, uh, okay, less noble one, less noble one have two lines. So two lines, one is going up, one is going down for having two process, right? So um, here you have point one. Point one is going up and going down. Okay, so this one is firm. This one is zinc. Huh? So go up and go down. This, this, this one is zinc. This one is forum. So go up and go down. Right. And then one is before corrosion or more noble. This is one. Okay, this is two. So more noble, less noble. And then um, how you find the potential for high high nobility metals. This one you measure in the experiment. Huh? So you have this one go up and you get one uh, potential value there. And then for, um, for zinc, huh? for zinc is point number four. Uh, what is important between ferrum and zinc will be you can see that the potential of cathode and anode always cathode always higher value than anode. So as long as you get these two differences, then you're okay. Huh? So how to get 3.3 .3 and 0.4 in the real experiment? When you measure, okay, when you measure, right? So you will get one value of your potential of cathode huh? just below, just below the uh, the high nobility potential okay uh, because it receiving more electron here so the potential will drop a little bit okay the 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 potential will drop a little bit for high nobility metal that's why the value drop from the early point one drop a little bit for high nobility while for Less no uh, less nobility number two here, less nobility number two here. When it giving electron, when it contribute itself, sacrifice itself, the potential will increase a little bit. Okay, the potential value. Okay, right? number two. If you extend to the right here, before corrosion, uh, less nobility metal. Number two, you extend to the right here, uh, to the left here, you will get number two. Number two is before corrosion happen or for less nobility. So when this one start corrosion already, uh, the potential of that you measure from uh, anode metals, it will increase a little bit. The voltage will increase a little bit. That's why you will, you will see this, this point. Uh. So uh, pay attention to what happened to um, these two metals. Uh. Okay, so I go back to the previous uh, table, this one. Huh? So previous uh, table, this one. So in the exam, as long as you give me the positive and negative, uh, the, the high nobility and low nobility line, then you label accordingly. Huh? What I'm looking for is the axis E versus log I, and then the positive line and negative line. I, I doesn't care uh, the, the line location, uh, either go up, go down. Uh. Uh, I'm seeing three lines for high and low nobilities. Right, low nobilities, there will be two lines. One go up, right? One go up and... Okay, one go up and one go down. Okay, one go up, one go down. And then the high nobility one, you have a negative line.
Okay, then what is important is that you can label point three and point four. Okay, potential cathode and potential for anode. Yeah? Right, so this one, uh, this one is for uh, ferrum and zinc. Eh? This one for ferrum and zinc. Um, important, eh? okay. Important, eh? so yeah. Just take note in your revision notes there. Okay. Right. Okay. Next, there will be ferrum and zinc, ferrum and zinc graph also. Right, this one you can you can read from my graph, uh, from my uh, PowerPoint lah, point one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, same idea. You can see that the voltage of uh, current or potential for cathode always higher than your anode. They always have a differences. We call it IR, the versus the voltage difference. Okay, so when you plot your graph, your E, e, e cathode must be higher than anode. Eh? So I make the two graphs side by side. This one is theoretical one that we covered before the lecture. Then this one is what I present to you today. Eh? This is the real working scenario. You see, there's a different. The shape almost same. I mean, the the the, the line behavior almost same, but um, the way we pinpoint point one two three four a bit a bit different. Okay. Because earlier one there are some assumption there. There's an assumption there, and the way we get the corrosion current is a bit different. Okay, if you study the the, the graph uh, side by side, then you you understand how what is the difference between this graph and this graph. Eh? This one, another one um, for. OK, this one is more general case. This one is in the active passive metal. Active passive metals um, with the less noble metals. OK, meaning uh, you have one less normal metal, then you have one active passive uh, metals. Okay, so this one is the real case, real working condition, and this one is the theoretical one, uh, simplified case. You can see the the shape actually almost the same, right? Only the distance of uh, these two line is a bit different. The gap here is a bit different, but the line of the shape line is almost same. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> okay, this slide is important. Um, so in test or exam, you'll be given a scenario, and you have we expect you to know how to plot a uh, even diagram. Huh? So again, when you see the question asks you what how to plot even diagram, so. You have to know, you have to remind yourself what is the axis of y, what is the axis of x. Huh? Even diagram start with potential y axis and the x axis is a log i in current ampere. Right? What you learn in your electronics class, current is in the unit of ampere, voltage or potential is in the unit of voltage and this one is uh, more, more in the corrosion uh, uh, community, they will use voltage uh, versus SHE. All right, this is for corrosion measurement. Huh? So, uh, but what is important is why you have to label your axis correctly. Yeah, uh, you, have, you don't draw one y axis and then no label, then no marks for that. Right, draw your y axis and then write potential V versus SHE, draw your x axis, log I, and then write the unit at ampere. Okay, so this is how you start uh, drawing the Ivan diagram. Then you'll be given two process. One anodic process, one is catholic process. So by looking its name, right, by looking at its name, 
All right? Look at this name. You know which one is higher, which one lower already. Anodic, lower. Catholic, higher. So what happened to the lower met uh, metals? What happened to the line shape? Lower always contribute, right? Always contribute electron. So you will have positive gradient straight line. This represent anodic. This one represent catholic. Okay? Anodic always uh, less metals. Anodic always have positive gradient line. Y equal to ms plus c. The gradient always positive. But the cathode will reduce. Right? Reduce. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then after you draw the axis, after you mentally mind map, you know what is the line for anodic, what is the line for catholic. Meaning on your mind, uh, you, you, you draw, I mean, in all your answer, you just draw the two, two axis. And then you know in your mind, you have two lines. One go up, one go down. Then you need to look carefully. This process, anodic process, it gives you some value in the test or final exam. Uh, it gives you one equation and then you're given the EO. What is EO again? EO is the starting voltage. EO is the starting voltage which is minus 0 0.44 volt. So in the, in the exam or in the test, you'll be asked to build your graph, just hand sketch. Uh, and then use your ruler to, you know that your ruler have lots of reading, right? Uh, so you do the do the range properly uh, on your answer sheet. You draw all this, the range here. Okay, so you draw uh, 0.6 to 0.2 and then you use the ruler scale there to properly done all this, uh, all this difference here. Okay, then you use your then you use your pencil uh, to draw a grid. Same with the log. Uh. Okay, later I explain about log. Now I explain about the voltage. Uh. So the potential negative 0 0.44 volt is negative. Uh. So there will be a zero value and then go down negative. 0 0.44 is around here. Okay, 0 0.44 around here. So where is this point on the graph? 0 0.44 is what process? Anodic process. So 0 0.44, you transfer 0 0.44 to anodic line here. You draw 0 0.44, you extend. You will touch your line here. Then how you know what point you have here? You continue to read, huh? You are given I not I sub zero. What does it mean? It means zero corrosion. I not 10 power negative 6 ampere cm uh, power negative 3. How you plot this value on the x-axis? X-axis is log, right? Log I log i and you're given 10 power negative 6 where is, where is this value 10 power negative 6 is negative uh, 6 uh. so on the graph here is uh, 10 power negative 6 equal to log i negative 6 right so you go negative 6 here you have two value here one is 10 power negative 6 and negative 4.4 this two is your y and x coordinate. So your x is log i. So you convert this one into log. Then negative 6, you change it into log. You will get negative 6. Project up. Combine with the negative 44. A negative point 44. You get the intersection point here. You mark this point as this scenario. Okay. You'll be told to use specific symbol to represent this point. Any question? Any one of you, you're not clear how to plot this point? This point must be on the line. Huh? Means after you plot this line, only you draw the line. Huh? 
after you plot this this point on the graph, then only you draw the positive line. Good, ah, huh? everyone in class, okay, ah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, okay huh? All right. So you already get the point for this uh, anodic already. Then for catholic, you know that catholic is a higher nobility metals. So higher nobility, the line will be negative line, but you're given some value there. So you're given E naught again. E naught zero zero volt. So where is zero zero volt? It's here. Then you're given corrosion rate before governing happen. I sub zero. 10 power negative 6 again. 10 power negative 6, you chain 10 power negative 6 to lock, you get negative 6 again. So intersect of 0, 0 volt and negative 6 lock, you get this point. Okay? This one is 0, 0 because it's given 0, 0, right? 0, 0. Intersect of minus, minus 6, you get this point. Once you get this point, again, the question will ask you to identify with a specific symbol. So you need to draw the symbol on the graph. Okay. Then after you have that co coordinate, you draw a straight line through this point. Okay, through this point, but with a negative gradient. Okay. Then you complete the, the question already. Okay, so it means that you I will give you the process reaction one and two, right? Cathodic process, anodic process, and cathodic process with some value there. Then I ask you to from this value generate a graph, generate an even diagram with all the important points on that. In this case, I'm focusing on E zero, E superscript zero, and corrosion rate before it happened. Then the intersection one later uh, in this uh, class, uh, you will see we will use this point to do calculation. This is the point where your anod anodic process and cathodic process meet together. This will be your point where you have the corrosion, you calculate the corrosion potential and the corrosion rate using this point. This point is where two metal reach their equilibrium. Meaning this point, if you project to the left, you get one voltage, right? This one, you get one voltage. So this voltage is what you measure when you combine two metal together. In cavitic corrosion, when you measure, you get one voltage. What is that voltage? This voltage is from here. When two process meet in the equilibrium process they meet at one point this point gives you one voltage that you can measure and you project down project down this is i log i however this one you project down it will give you the corrosion rate okay it will give you the corrosion rate corrosion rate of the carbonic uh, process however this one is the um uh, not corrosion rate is a Corrosion potential, sorry. Uh, sorry, this one, I corrode, uh, I corrode is the uh, corrosion rate, sorry. Okay. Later we do calculation for that. Huh? Okay. This one, continue to see this one is standard steel and graphite. So you will see something like that in the industry. Okay. Chocolate color and all this. This one, uh, when you have a different metals joined together, then corrosion will happen. And the one that you see, this one is the one have low nobility. Normally, huh? normally you see the one that corrode have low nobility. Okay, so again, this slide is uh, this slide is important. So there are four main factors that affect the galvanic coupling, right? Galvanic coupling. So there are four main uh, there are four main factor that uh, affect the galvanic coupling. Uh. Um, why we use galvanic coupling here? Because galvanic corrosion 
it must be electrically connected. So when it collect, uh, electrically connected, it means galvanic coupling. So how good is the corrosion will happen? It depends on how good the coupling happen, right? So these are the four factors that affecting the galvanic coupling. Nobility, over voltage of cathode reaction. This one is the catholic reaction on high nobility metals or more noble metals. Surface, okay, before I go this one, so you know that nobility, what I mean by nobility, right? So when you have different nobility, the higher difference between two metals, the higher corrosion rate will happen. Okay, so this one, nobility, yeah? I'm looking for the one I highlight, the keyword I highlight, yeah? practical nobility between two metals. Second one, over voltage of cathodic reaction of more noble metal, what does it mean? It means in the table that I give you, the E table, the potential table, the more positive charge, uh, not the, first, the more positive voltage you have for high nobility, it will generate higher corrosion rate for his partner. Okay, so another one that affect the coupling is that the cathodic over, over voltage of cathodic uh, reaction. All right, then another one is the surface area ratio, which is your S, M and S, N, the surface area ratio. So um, if you, we have covered the equation for that one, right? So if you have the ratio is high, then you affect the coupling also. Another one is conductivity of your electrolyte. Okay, conductivity of electrolyte. This one is more on the solution, electrolyte. So we have two metal to get uh, meet together. They must have some solution or bridge that link these two metal together, right? So uh, use electrolyte instead of solution eh, in your answer. If you say solution, I will put a question mark. Uh, what do you mean by solution? The keyword I'm looking for for galvanic couplings is electrolytes, right? Electrolyte conductivity, right? Because the more conductivity it have, the more faster the exchange of electron between the two metals. Okay, the faster the rate, the faster the corrosion rate. Okay, so uh, just. Just take care of these four points. Now. Okay. Let's go for a few more slides. Yeah? Okay, so another one is called um, driving voltage, right? Driving voltage. Okay, maybe we go for a short break lah, before we go into here. So we, we, we before the break, we start at four factors that affect your galvanic couplings. Ah. All right. So they are, these are four that will affect your galvanic coupling. Okay, I'll stop the recording here.